Hello everyone, it has been a little while since my last video, but I am back because of the new engine RPG Maker MZ. It's a very nice engine, I love it very much. I haven't been using it for a very long time, I suspect like most people. I haven't been as busy as uh, other coders. But um, here I am today, so um, I want to present today my uh, audio plugin, audio engine plugin, because it's going to be... Uh, the base for uh, all my future plugins related to audio. So for RPG Maker MZ, of course, this plugin is going to be relying heavily on plugin commands. So um, it's not going to be compatible for MV out of the box. Uh, there's going to be some work required to make that uh, available for MV. For now, I don't have any plans to port it to MV, but if there's a lot of demand, I might uh, in the future. So um, this is the first... Uh, this is the first plugin I'm releasing for our PJ Maker MZ, so it's a big plugin. So I'll go through everything, and it's, it's going to take a couple of videos because I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, to go through every features uh, in only one video. And since I might add uh, more features, more features in this plugin in the future and future updates, uh, it's going to be it's it's going to be a good idea to have multiple videos covering all the mul the multiple features in this plugin. So um. If you're looking for uh, multiple, for the ability to play multiple BGMs and BGS at the same time, um, or having some spatial audio, like um, the volume of a of an audio is, is determined by the distance from the from the player from the player's distance from from the audio source, and also the panning. Also, uh, this is the right place. Um, it, there's also going to be uh, the voice acting channel. There's going to be a uh, uh, there's going to be um, the ability to have um, the the map autoplay BGM determined by the parent map and all uh, sound effect uh, pitch variants, for instance, to ha to add some v variety in your in your sound effects. So there's going to be tons of little features like this. Um, there's going to be a couple big features like the spatial audio. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of features in this plugin, and there will be even more features in, in the future as uh, you guys request them. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, um, so just to start, I'm going to show you uh, what this plugin is capable of doing with the little short clip. Alright, so you saw that clip, uh, you saw all the um, audio effects, so I'm going to teach you how to use this plugin to achieve uh, what you just saw. So uh, we're just going to start by uh, actually adding that plugin to your project, so it's pretty straightforward. And your plugin managers, just add the Mush Audio Engine here. So uh, if you ever need some help, uh, there's the forum link here or there. Uh, I'm very active on the forum, so it's the best way to contact me if uh, there's uh, any issues. So. All right, so here you see there's a tons of parameters and there's a huge help file. Don't don't worry too much about it. I will guide you through uh, every feature. So we're gonna start here with um, the volume balance section. Um, this is where uh, you can equalize the volume depending on the different channels. So um, of course this is an additional um, volume option independent from the one in the options menu in game. So uh, they're gonna be a uh, 
bo both working besides each other. The, the only thing is this one here, the volume balance section. Uh, they won't be you won't be able to change to change it mid game. You're you're still going to be able to change the volume in the options menu, but like uh, this is more of a general setting. So um, yeah, the player won't be able to see it. So be, the the reason why I added the uh, volume balance section is uh, because because often if if you download like a uh, audio asset packs, like for example, you have uh, uh, more BGMs or sound effects, you're gonna notice sometimes the packs like uh, the pack uh, the uh, the tracks in your pack is gonna have like an audio level lower than the RTP. So they so like instead of like lowering all the RTP to like fifty percent volume uh. You can just dec decrease the uh, the sound effect volume uh, here directly. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you're gonna notice there are two additional channels here: the UIS and the VSCs. So these two channels are two extra uh, optional channels that you can decide to activate here in the general features. Here you see UI sound effects, which stands for UIS, and the voice sound channel, which st stands for VSC. So, um. If you want to use those extra channels, just set them to true here. So basically, uh, the UI, the UIS channel is basically for sound effects, but those that are specific to the UI, for example, the cursor, uh, the confirm sound effect, the cancel sound effect, the buzzer, uh, the shop, and all those other, basically everything that is, um, what, uh, everything that is in the database here. I'm just going to show you. If you go to here. Uh, system one, you're gonna have all the UI sound effects here. So, um, what the UIS channel does is it's gonna create an extra audio channel independent from the SE channel for all those sound effects. So, um, it's gonna be available in the options menu, and the player will be able to set the volume of uh, the UI sound effects independently from the other sound effects, like uh, the sound effects in battles from the animations and other sound effects, regular sound effects. So um, similarly, uh, the voice sound channel is for uh, voice acting. So um, so uh, it's just going to create a channel for voice acting. So uh, the player can control the volume of this of sound uh, of the sound acting uh, tracks easier uh, easier like that. So it's not going to be tied to like a regular audio or sound effects. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, of course, if you're you're gonna have extra channels, uh, you need to be able to control the volume in the options menu. So, if you go down here in the option uh, menu options changes, so you're gonna see uh, the ability to uh, well, if you want like if you have the extra UIS channel, you can set this to true. Uh, if this is uh, set to false, which uh, to off, well, it's just not gonna add the option in the options menu. So if it's true, you can also set the text just below here. And it's the same for the VSC section over here. Um, of course, uh, I'm going to add uh, a master volume sec option. This is pretty straightforward. I don't think I, it requires any explanation. So yeah, that's pretty much it for volume balance and the extra and two extra channels. So uh, that's pretty much it. All right, now we're going to take a look at the next feature called Map Parent Autoplay. It's in the General Features section. It's a little because it's a small feature; it doesn't require a lot of settings. So, um, basically, what this does is, um, if a map doesn't have an autoplay BGM, uh, the map is actually going to look at its parent map to see if uh, that parent map has an autoplay BGM. So. Yeah, uh, this is very useful, especially if you have like, um, for example, uh, towns or dungeons who are uh, that are more like multiple maps put together rather rather than one single map, and they all share the same uh, music or BGM. So, so for example, um, let's say um, I have this town here, and let's say uh, this is also part of the town. It's supposed to be connected. I don't know how we're gonna do this. Let's say there's a uh, there we go. Transfer to this. I know it doesn't make sense, but like, let's just say it works. There we go. Right. Um, let's do this. And let's say in the fishing village here too, there's going to be a transfer back to the forest town like this. And the player is going to be looking up. So like this and like this. All right. So as you can see, uh, this town ha has an autoplay BGM. This one. There we 
we go. Like, um, it's very impractical for, um, if, like, your, your town, if you're gonna set the same BGM here for this town too, so. The thing is, um, especially if you have, like, ten maps, like, forming a town or a dungeon, you don't wanna, like, set it ten times the same BGM in each indiv individual map, because if you decide to change the BGM, like, uh, down the line in development, well, you're gonna have to change, well, the setting for the autoplay BGM for all of those ten maps, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna add a, let's call this forest town. Then we're gonna call it like this, and this forest town is gonna be renamed a center town, like this. All right, so we're gonna drag this and we're gonna put it there. So forest town is gonna be the parent map for both of those maps. So we're, what we are gonna do is we're gonna turn off the autoplay BGM here and we're gonna go into the parent map and we're gonna set the BGM, which is field one. I believe the volume was 40. There we go. So now those two maps don't have an autoplay BGM like this, but when we're gonna hit, uh, when we're gonna hit play and enter like uh, the map, sorry about that. You're gonna see, oh, I selected the wrong, uh, well, you can still see how it works. It's playing here and when I switch map, when I transfer th to the other map, it's gonna keep playing. All right. All right, I'm just gonna switch it back to the real one, not field one, it's supposed to be town one. There we go. All right, now there's a little, um, if for example on, uh, you want like, you have like 10 maps inside this forest town. So it's, it's formed by 10 maps and nine maps use the same BGM, but like the last one, uh, you don't, you don't even want a BGM, you just want it to be silent. Um, well, uh, if you check the box here, autoplay BGM, and you leave it to none, it's not going to check uh, the parent's map BGM, autoplay BGM. It's just n not going to play anything. So if we're going to go here, sorry, I have a dual monitor set up and it's, the game is booting on my primary monitor. So, all right, so let's transfer to the other map. As you can see, there's no more audio now. So just keep that in mind. Um, so basically to summarize everything, this feature is, is a, if a map doesn't like uh, have an autoplay BGM and like to see if there's an autoplay BGM, it's not if it's playing something, it's if this little box here is checked. Uh, if the box is checked, it's just gonna play um, the track that you specify here, like like by default. If there's uh, the box is checked, but there's nothing, it's just not gonna play anything. If the box is unchecked, it's gonna check, uh, it's gonna look at the parent's map autoplay BGM. And it can go back at uh, like multiple parent maps. So if this forest map doesn't have an autoplay BGM, it's gonna look at the uh, this map's parent map and etc. So yeah, uh, that's pretty pretty much it for this feature. Um, I find it very useful. I hope you guys will also find it useful. All right. So the last feature we're gonna cover in this video is the um, uh, it's this one here, the SEUIS variance feature. So. Uh, all right, so just to, before I start, uh, if you're more interested in the um, multiple BGM feature and the uh, spatial audio and or voice acting feature, um, those are going to be covered in the in the future video. Well, pretty much uh, part two and part three, which I'm going to make right after this video. So, all right, so back to this feature here. Um, this is a pretty simple feature. Uh, every time my sound effect is played, um, the pitch, the played pitch, it's going to be slightly different from the indicated pitch so this is going to be like for example you set the pitch to 100 uh there's going to be like um a little variance be, uh, around that pitch uh, if you set a five percent variance uh the the game is going to play that sound effect uh with a pitch between 95 and 105 it's purely random so yeah this adds a little bit a little bit more life into the game especially for uh, sound effects that are played often in the game like the cursor the confirm, the buzzer, and all those sound effects. So they're gonna be slightly different every time they're played. So, all right, so let's start off. Um, you're gonna see, you're gonna notice, well, it's split into two sections here. So a section for the sound effects and, an, and another section for the UI sound effects. So this is, of course, if you have this feature, the UI sound effects feature turned on. So if you split those into two different channels, so, um. And this is going to allow you to like uh, deactivate the feature for only for only one but not the other so like for example 
you want the variance feature to be active for all the UI sound effects, but you don't want it to be active for the regular sound effects, well, you can easily turn them off here and keep them on here in the UIS, UIS variance feature section here. So yeah, th that is possible. Um, if you don't have this turned on, so like this, which is by default how uh, the RPG Maker engine works, meaning that uh, UI sound effects are played into the same channel as regular sound effects. But um, if you're if you're if you have that off, there's a little um, there's a little option here called static follow sound effects. So by default, uh, how the engine calls UI sound effects, they call them static sound effects. So basically, um, if you don't have that extra UIS channel, uh, you can decide to turn this on if you want static sound effects to follow the same features as the sound effects here. Um, basically, if you turn this off, it's gonna make it so sound effects use those features, but the UI sound effects will not uh, follow those features. So, of course, this this little feature here, this little parameter here, it's only useful if this is turned off like this. If this is turned on, you just don't have to worry about this parameter here. Just worry about those two sections. Be oh, sorry, that was my alarm. All right, so if, uh, all right, so just to recap, if this is off, you don't need to worry about this section here. You only need to worry about this section here and this parameter here. If this is oh that, that was if it's turned off if it's turned on well you don't have to worry about this parameter and you have you need to check those two sections here so that's pretty much it um I'm gonna just show you how it's uh, of course you can decide to set the the variance feature for the pitch but you can also do it for the volume so it's the same thing there's a, a slight variance uh, around the indicated uh, pitch uh, volume for this one. So um, let's set this, at, uh, this is in, turn, in percentage, not point. So this is not plus or minus five pitch, it's plus or minus 5%. So, so let's set this to like 20, so it's easier to hear in game. All right, so and to, let's go into the game. All right, so I deactivated the volume for, I only kept the sound effect, so it's gonna be easier to hear. So as you can hear, uh, there's a different pitch every time the cursor is playing. So there's a different pitch every time, so this adds a little vari variety into the game, which I think is pretty nice. So yeah, that's pretty much the feature, guys. Um, if you like this video, please like the video, subscribe. I'm going to be making more tutorial videos on this plugin, the Audio Engine plugin. Uh, of course, I'm also going to make... Um, more audio plugins in the future. Uh, basically, I'm making a, I am starting a new project, like a personal prog project in RPG Maker MZ. So every time I need like a certain feature and I can't find it in other plugins, well, I'm gonna make the plugin. And if it's not a project specific uh, plugin, well, I'm gonna share it with you guys. So yeah, um, that's it for this video, guys. I'm gonna be back with part two and part three for the spatial audio, the multiple BGM feature, and the voice acting feature. So that's pretty much it for today, guys, and I'll see you next time.